I'm Holly Cook and joining me today to talk about dividend investing is Morningstar's Josh Peters. Josh, thanks for joining me. Very good to be here. So you are our Director of Equity Income Strategy and as in your role you are picking sort of dividend stocks for your own portfolio. Can you give us a little bit of a kind of idea as to why, why the focus on dividend stocks? Because you know, so many people are always looking for undervalued stocks. What is mm -hmm. it about dividends that you find so interesting? I think every investor, even if they're interested in dividends, they have to concentrate on total return, which is, of course, the dividend component as well as long-term capital appreciation. But there are so many practical advantages associated with having that above average dividend. And uh, I operate in the United States where still a lot of large companies don't pay dividends at all. Uh, a number of them still prioritize share repurchases and the dividend yields are very small. Our market yields only 2% on average. Uh, so I come over here and I just you know salivate you know at all the the, the high dividend yields that are available, uh, but to get an above average yield in almost any uh, market uh, tends to furnish first a practical stream of income that you can use for reinvestment or for to fund portfolio withdrawals if you're in retirement or have some other obligation to meet, uh, as well as those larger companies that uh, pay the big dividends tend to be more financially secure. Not all of them. You want to avoid the highest dividends that might be cut, uh, but I. I like the defensive characteristics, you know, less risk in a recession from a utility or staples firms, uh, things like that. And then also you've got a lot of historical evidence suggesting that the above average yields uh, in a given market are going to tend to outperform over long periods of time. Not all the time, and honestly this has been a period in the last year here where higher yield stocks have tended to suffer, other areas of the market are, are doing better, and the overall market is sort of stagnated, you know, with a lot of uh, macro pressures of various kinds, but over long periods of time. You start thinking about retirement, you know, a 10-year or 20-year, 30-year horizon is absolutely relevant to think about a long-term investment strategy. Dividends tend to outperform even though they're lower risk. So there's, there's lots of both practical advantages as well as a performance tailwind associated with these higher yielding stocks. So that's a really interesting point. I mean, you know, when it comes to finding these high yielding stocks, obviously if you were to just screen purely on yield, you could end up with some stocks that really aren't so favorable. So what else are you looking for as well as that yield number? Yeah, the, the way I sort it down is to think in terms of dividend safety and long-term dividend growth. And you're absolutely right. The very highest yielding stocks, those are more of potential value plays, or maybe the high dividend yield is signaling that the stock is severely undervalued. But if that's the case, the company might also be in a real pinch financially, and the dividend is going to be cut. And if the dividend uh, cut is not discounted in the share price already, then you're probably going to suffer. And in any event, if the cut's made, then you're going to suffer a loss of income. So those are certainly firms that I want to avoid. Uh, secondly, uh, in order to get that long-term total return prospect, it's not enough to just say have a four, five, six percent dividend yield because that's a very attractive yield, especially in a low interest rate environment, but it's not sufficient for a total return long-term from owning stocks. So I'm going to expect dividend growth not just from you know a certain sub segment of my portfolio that has lower yields and better growth prospects. I think every company needs needs to be able to provide some dividend growth uh, in order to furnish an adequate total return. And to provide for both of these features, the most valuable aspect that I've found in, in the more than 10 years now that I've been running uh, the strategy is to find companies with economic moats. Uh, you know, our uh, uh, framework for evaluating a company's competitive advantages and how long they may last and, and how uh, valuable and profitable those advantages will turn out to be, because the moat is going to defend the profits of the firm against competition, uh, which is going to secure the earnings that are necessary to maintain that dividend, so it plays into dividend safety. It also implies that when a company is expanding internally, even if there's not a lot of growth potential, say in Staples, uh, for example, that whatever the earnings the company is retaining, uh, those will be in reinvested at a high rate of return and lead to that long-term dividend growth. So just very briefly going into sectors, you mentioned earlier that you know you have a UK-based utility stock and that you also have a UK-based pharmaceutical stock. Are there any mm -hmm. other sectors where you're seeing sort of interesting dividend trends recently? Uh, it's been, I think, in the last uh, couple of months in the United States at least, fashionable to start uh, dumping utilities and, and REITs. People are worried about higher interest rates. Uh, but this is where our long-term uh, framework for valuing firms comes in very handy because we're not discounting future cash flows under the assumption that interest rates are going to stay at 1 or 2% forever. 
Uh, in fact, we've normalized all of our long-term uh, interest rate assumptions that underpin what we expect for uh, equity returns as well. So now we're seeing some firms uh, in the United States uh, looking fairly attractive that have high yields. Even though interest rates have just started to move up, the stock market's gotten so far out ahead of this uh, just in, you know, in terms of chasing performance and you know, being very quick to dump anything that people think is going to be a loser, that now some names uh, are, are pretty attractive. Josh, thanks very much for sharing your insights with us today. Thank you too, Holly. For Morningstar, I'm Holly Cook. Thanks for watching.